Welcome back to another quick and dirty rebuild. This time around, it's going to be the Washington football team. They've now been renamed to the Washington Commanders, which is a better name than the generic football team. What is a quick and dirty rebuild? We will be uh, rebuilding this uh, team and within one episode leading them to a Super Bowl win. So it's a way more compressed version of a rebuild. As you might have noticed, this is the first uh, time for me on PlayStation 5. Uh, so things will be moving a bit differently. Let's take a look at the roster. The Washington football team is uh, a mixed bag, I would say. Uh, I will be looking at the secondary first. And if you look at the secondary, you can see that this is a very very good uh, defense here uh, especially right edge D tackles and the left edge are absolute quality with Montez Sweat, Josh Allen, Dave Payne and uh, Chris Young over here already a superstar x-factor. The corners are fantastic with uh, Carl Fuller and William Jackson III. Uh, the strong safety is very good with curl up here 82 overall a position that might need adapting is uh, the free safety um, and of course the left outside linebacker position. I mean Dave Mayo here is nice um, but he's a 66 overall and a 29 year old so he will not be developing further he will be regressing so this is definitely a position that we will have to focus on uh, pretty quickly otherwise we will run into problems on defense and free safety is basically the same. We have Saquon Hampton here, he's 25 years old, 64 overall, so he will develop. Benjamin St. Just here, 24 and a 73, but he's a corner, so uh, dragging him up will not really help us because we need the depth at corner. So we will need to do something at free safety. Looking at the offense, you can see that we have uh, Carson Wentz in here, he uh, joined in this uh, off-season from the Indianapolis Colts and uh, he's 29 years old, 76 overall. His ratings are okay-ish, I guess, uh, but uh, of course looking at his age and his overall and especially his development rate, he will be regressing very, very soon. Uh, his backup is Taylor Heineke and then we've got uh, the fantastic Case Kukas down here. I just love that name. 26 years old, 56 overall. So uh, no way that he will be able to help us. Um, I, like, uh, I, I like the running back here. It's Antonio Gibson, 24 years old, 81 overall star dev. So he's definitely one for the future. We've got a fullback in here, a dedicated fullback. He's our third tight end. That's John Bates. So that's good. Um, at wide receiver, uh, we've got one of the best in the game currently with Terry McLaurin, 25 years old, 98 overall already, superstar X-Factor. So this is great for our passing game. Um, behind him at wide receiver one, you can see that we've got players in their 70s. They're young, 25 years old. And uh, Antonio Gandy-Golden, 24 years old, 72 overall. So these are for the future maybe. Um, on wide receiver 2, we've got Curtis Samuel, 26 years old, 81 overall, also looking good. Sims and Brown down here. So we have a lot of depth at wide receiver. Uh, looking at my O-line up here, starting at left tackle, Charles Leno Jr., 30 years old, 78. He is okay for the moment. Uh, Andy Norwell, 30 years old, 81 overall, star dev, so he's okay as well, but 30 and uh, uh, Leno Jr. will be regressing. Um, Chase Rullier, uh, 29 years old, 79 overall. Again, star dev, so he will not be regressing as quickly, but uh, that is definitely um, an area that we need to take a look at at least. At right guard, we have an issue, 23 years old, 67 overall, Sadiq Charles. Um, Again, he is very young, so he will probably improve. That's good. Um, he's also a scheme fit, so he will be uh, improving quickly. But uh, at 67, he will not be much help straight away. And then we've got Sam Cosme, 
Uh, I really like the look of him, 23-73 overall, so that should help us. And our tight end is Logan Thomas, 31 years old, 79 overall. So at uh, offense, there are a few positions that we need to fix up straight away. And then there are a few positions um, that we should uh, improve over time. On defense, uh, I think that uh, we can get away with uh, improving left outside linebacker here and uh, getting a free safety. So that, that should definitely help us. Um, our overalls aren't bad. We've got an 85 defense, an 81 offense and 82 overalls. So we are starting in a good place, way better than with some other teams. But uh, this doesn't change the fact that we really need to be active here. Quick and dirty rebuild means that it's compressed into uh, one episode, of course, uh, for your viewing pleasure. But uh, we will still be maintaining some sort of realism here. And although I would really like to trade Carson Wentz straight away again, um, I will not be doing that. We are here in the off season of 2021. I have simmed this far ahead in time. Um, so we are at uh, real life time now in uh, April 2022. Um, I have loaded in the new uh, draft class from Bengal, who has a fantastic channel. So. Sure, you know of it. If you don't, please go ahead and check it out. He, he, he really has fantastic content. Time for a quick draft recap. We have drafted a quarterback, Sam Howell, out of North Carolina, 70 overall. Uh, in the first round, might not be the best quarterback in the class, but he definitely will be our quarterback. I went for him because I felt uh, that this uh, would add a little more, a little more um, realism to this rebuild here. Uh, he has been linked with the Washington football team in real life. So uh, this is why I chose him. Uh, he's got good throw power and he definitely uh, has room to grow, but he's got good attributes uh, in the accuracy department. Uh, play action under pressure is, is, is uh, very nice. Uh, speed acceleration change of direction are okay stamina and toughness are very good overall of course uh, a lot of potential there to grow but he's very young especially in comparison to the other quarterbacks in the class uh, Kenny Pickett is 24 if you want to compare that so he's got three years to improve and definitely one year to improve uh, behind Carson Wentz our second pick was Darian Kinnard a right guard we needed to improve that position 71 overall he's from Kentucky and uh, he really has great strength and impact blocking so that should help us a lot um, he's also a scheme fit so that's great uh, Kirby Joseph a free safety 69 overall 20 years old from Alabama was our third pick uh, we just needed more depth at that position his speed and, and acceleration were what uh, convinced me here Kyron Williams 21 year old halfback 71 overall normal dev trait um, with very nice uh, overall skills uh, you can see that he's quick that he can break a tackle that his carrying skills are good so uh, all of that really speaks for him uh, sixth round pick was cold strange a left guard with a hidden dev trait that came a bit as a surprise but uh, we're gonna take that 62 overall um, we can build on that. He's got great strength and good impact blocking um, and his uh, secondary attributes are well-rounded overall, all above 70. So that is good. Um, he will be able to improve, of course. Um, and lastly, we've got Trey Turner, a wide receiver. Um, I let the CPU pick that uh, because we don't really need him. Uh, we have a lot of depth at that position, but his speed acceleration are very good agility, jumping and so on. So uh, this is very nice. We should be able to build on that. Okay, so we're at the beginning of the 2022 season now. Uh, it's preseason time. First game will be against the Houston Texans. Let's take a look at our roster after the draft. So we can see that uh, left uh, tackle is unchanged. We have uh, an additional player here at left guard uh, behind Andy Norwell. So. He is not uh, high enough in overall so that I could use him straight away. We will have to wait and see what that development trait turns out to be. 
Uh, we've got Rulier still at center. He's solid at least. Um, we have our draft pick, uh, Darian Kinnard, the right guard out of Kentucky. At 71 overall, he's slotted straight into the team. He was better than Charles here. Um, at right tackle, we are still with Sam Cosme. I think I'm going to stick with him. And at tight end, uh, things are unchanged as well. Down here, this is where the fun is going to start. I will be letting Sam Howell uh, develop uh, behind Carson Wentz, at least for the first season. Um, this is again due to realism, because um, <laughs> I don't think that uh, the Washington Commanders would trade very, very much capital uh, for Carson Wentz and then simply replace him with a draft pick. On defense, things are unchanged. I did get uh, Dodson, Tyrell Dodson here, uh, left outside linebacker. Um, uh, from free agency, he's 70 overall and an improvement over Dave Mayo straight away. And we have a new player here at uh, free safety, Kirby Joseph, uh, 20 years old out of Alabama from the draft. Again, he is better by five points overall uh, in comparison to Hampton. So this is the squad that we will be heading into the season with. And as always, I will see you at uh, the playoff. At the end of the 2022 season, the Washington football team finds itself at the bottom of NFC East with a 6 and 11 overall. Take a quick look at the scores here. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Uh, we did record 11 losses and uh, only six wins. The losses were sometimes pretty close, like these two here. Um, the wins were crazy all over the place. One was very, very high against the Rams out of all teams. Uh, then one against the Texans, that was a bit closer again. Then the losses um, came tumbling in. Time points here, three points here. And uh, overall, um, not much that can be read out of these statistics. Okay, so we are in the re-sign players period right now. Um, let's just take a quick look at the retirements. I want to show you that uh, Aaron Rodgers retired and Tom Brady retired. So these are two big names retiring. Uh, the other ones, uh, nothing crazy in here. Jason Kelsey, who joined uh, the Bengals, um, is out at the moment. Uh, so he has retired as well. All right, time for player negotiations. There are 12 players that need renegotiating here. Um, the big name in here, of course, is Terry McLaurin. Uh, he wants a massive deal. Um, next up, we've got D-Tackle, Darren Payne. Uh, we've got right outside linebacker, Cole Holcomb. These three I really want to re-sign. Carson Wentz, I actually will not be re-signing. It's just a bit too expensive, and I want to base this around uh, Sam Howell here. And in real life, it could turn out to be that uh, Carson Wentz just doesn't um, really prove to be the quarterback for the Washington Commanders and that they trade him on or do something else with him. Uh, wide receiver Kevin Harmon, I want to keep. Antonio Gandhi Golden, I want to keep. And uh, back here, I will be looking uh, in depth. So let's try and re sign Terry McLaurin here. I think that a seven year deal uh, is our best bet. Uh, the salary is substantial. This is really a crazy, crazy large contract, but he's our best wide receiver and I really want to hold on to him. Next up, we've got Darren Payne. All right, we re-signed him as well. Cole Holcomb, I want to uh, hold on to him as well. He's not the greatest player on earth, but uh, he's a very solid right outside linebacker and he's a scheme fit, so he will be improving. Next up, uh, an offer for Kelvin Harmon. Let's take a look. 26 years old. He is a 78 overall and a scheme fit, so that is good. But we do have a lot of depth at that position. I'm not quite sure if he's really worth it. Um, Antonio Gandhi-Golden, another wide receiver, 25 years old. Uh, Casey Tuhill, left edge, um, 69 overall, 27. I just need depth, so uh, I will be holding on to him at the moment. Next up, David Mayo. I will not be uh, re-signing him. I will not be re-signing Daniel Wise. I will be re-signing Keith Ismail. 
He's just a solid backup here uh, and I just need a little bit of depth. So that's good. Steven Gonzalez, uh, left guard. I think we can get something better in the draft. And we got Bumi Rotimi here at right edge, 64. He's 26 years old at least. Um, all right, let me go back on that. Uh, what I just said, I will be re-signing Steven Gonzalez just to be on the safe side. I want to have depth and uh, Bunmi Rutimi as well. He's 26, so that should work. Both of their contracts are not as expensive, so that is okay. Daniel Weiss, D-tackle, 27 years old. Um, again, I'm not crazy happy with this. I'm going to give him a two-year deal. I just want to hold on to him until I get a better player in. David Mayo will not be re-signed. Casey Tuil has been re-signed. Antonio Gandhi Golden, 25 years old. Again, I do think that uh, he can prove to be useful and he's quite young as well. Kelvin Harmon, he is better than Antonio Gandhi Golden. Um, again, I'm going back on my word on almost all of these here, but looking at, at, their, uh, at their cost, each of these is worth it, uh, just really apart uh, from Carson Wentz. All our other quarterbacks are nearly as good. And we're gonna check in on Sam Howell now. Okay, so our lineup is looking like this after one season and after uh, player upgrades. I will be putting Sam Howell up here now because Carson Wentz will be leaving the team. Um, I do see that there have been improvements down here. Um, so this is really nice as well. Um, up here, we have had uh, the beginning of regression for Logan Thomas, a 75 year old, uh, sorry, 75 overall, but he's 32 years old and he has started regressing badly. So I will start trading now before we head into off season. Okay, so the first order of the day will be to declutter our squad as it stands. Quarterback, there's nothing much to declutter. We only have Sam Howell in here. Uh, next up are the halfbacks. We've got Antonio Gibson, Kyron Williams, Jared Patterson, who's a no-face. So uh, I'm sorry, Jared, but I'm going to have to let you go. Apart from that, we don't really need that much. Uh, we can get someone else at the draft and we've got uh, two solid halfbacks here. At fullback, we've got nobody. Uh, wide receiver core is really large and that's a bit too large for my liking. A few of these will be heading straight to practice squad, I'm aware of that, uh, but there are quite a few where I'm just sure that they will never really play a big role for us. Uh, Terry McLaurin, of course, Curtis Samuel, Kelvin Harmon, Diami Brown and Antonio Candy golden I do think that they will be playing a role. Trey Turner can develop back there, he will not hurt us. But someone like Seth Williams, for instance, um, he has a larger contract than Trey Turner um, and uh, I'm not convinced that uh, he will really push us forward that far. All right, so we finished our first deal. We are sending three wide receivers to the Bears and receiving a seventh round pick. I'm aware that this is not the greatest deal in history, but I'm just trying to clear up cap space, get in a bit of draft capital for the upcoming draft 2023. Again, three wide receivers, this time to the Bengals. Robertson, Brown and Bayless are traded for a seventh round pick. Again, we're clearing up cap space and uh, decluttering the roster a bit. Next deal is we are sending our tight end Thomas to the Browns. We are receiving Cole Turner, a rookie from the 2022 draft. Next deal done, we are sending our left hacker, Leno Jr., 31 years of age, 78 overall. And a seventh round pick to the Bengals, we are receiving Trevor Penning, a left tackle with a star dev. So this is definitely an improvement at that position and uh, a move for the future. Next deal done, we're sending Andy Norwell, our left guard, to the Browns. We are receiving Sion Johnson, also a left guard, 76 overall star dev, 23 years old. Andy Norwell was 31 and starting to regress. Another deal. We're sending our left edge to Hill, 68 overall, to the Cardinals. We are receiving Arvin, 64. Uh, doesn't look great on paper, but we are saving on cap space here. Arvin is just cheaper. 
and uh, Tuchel is 27 years old and a 68 overall so nothing much doing behind Chase Young. Straight trade again, we are sending two midline backers, Joseph and Weaver, to the Colts. We are receiving left outside linebacker, 23 years old, 63 overall, Neil Taylor. Uh, we needed a bit more depth at left outside linebacker, and we had five midline backers that we didn't need for the one uh, position in our lineup. So we're decluttering and uh, reducing cap space again. Next deal done, we are trading for corner Michael Lodgemudia. He's an 81 overall start F trait. Uh, with the Broncos, we're sending our corner Jackson III as this year's uh, round seven pick and next year's round seven pick to the Broncos. So this is a positional change and Jackson had a very, very expensive contract. So again, we are reducing cap space. So heading into free agency in the draft, you can see that uh, things have changed a bit in our squad. We have uh, renewed the left side of our offensive line uh, with the left tackle and a new left guard. Uh, we've kept the center the same, although I do have a feeling that I will be bringing Sian Johnson up instead of Rullier, uh, simply because he's a bit younger and I do expect him to be, uh, to be uh, developing quicker. Um, we've kept uh, our right guard Kennard here is a 60, uh, 76 overall and a scheme fit. I do feel like he will be improving in time to really help us. Sam Cosme, I'm going to stick with him here. Um, we did bring in uh, Cole Turner here at tight end. So that is that is definitely a player that I, that I really feel confident, but he will need time to grow. Uh, he's a very young prospect, of course. At wide receiver, we have decluttered a bit, uh, brought it down to manageable numbers and uh, reduced it to um, to really improve the players that we have. Uh, fullback, we now have a dedicated fullback. That's nice. Um, Antonio Gibson has gone up a bit. He's still our number one option. And we have committed to Sam Howell, who will uh, continue to grow and develop here at uh, the quarterback position. Looking at defense, we have improved uh, the position at free safety a bit. So that is that is good. Um, we have uh, kept the D line up here pretty much the same, but we have cleared up behind the midline backer position a bit. We simply do not need five midline backers for one slot. Um, and apart from that, it was just a little bit of wheeling and dealing here. Uh, a bit more depth at left outside linebacker. I feel confident with Dotson, but we have someone behind him in case he gets injured. And uh, we made a major change at cornerback two, where we brought in Michael Ojemudia, who I really like a lot. He's 25 years old um, and he's got a star dev. His ratings are very nice as well. And uh, he will furtherly improve himself and he will improve the team. At special teams, we are not uh, blessed. We have a kicker um, with a 69 overall, so we might take a look at that. And we've got a punter who we are happy with, his Tressway. He's quite old, but at the moment he's doing well. Okay, let's do a quick draft recap of the 2023 draft. In the first round at pick seven, we picked up Will Tucker, left outside linebacker, 22 years old, out of Alabama, 69 overall. Um, I just needed a bit more depth at that position. I was maybe hoping of picking up someone with a hidden depth trait, but uh, nothing to be had. He was the highest ranked left outside linebacker. Not a strong class in regards to that position. Um, at center, that was a position we needed. We picked up Bernie Borden in the second round. He's a 22 year old rookie out of Penn State, 71 overall, hidden depth trait. I'm happy about that. And uh, we've got uh, nice strength and a lot of nice attributes in regards to pass blocking. Uh, he's very strong in that area and impact blocking as well. He should be injury safe. Really like this. I do hope for a good development trade. Third round pick, Alex Drayton, right tackle. 22 years old rookie out of USC. 68 overall, but also a hidden death trade. I might even consider slotting him straight into the squad to find out his hidden death trade. Uh, Troy Harris, uh, Tori Harris, sorry. 22-year-old rookie from USC, 71 overall, normal death trade. 
fifth rounder was Cordell Crutchfield, 68 overall, normal death trade, halfback. Another wide receiver, Travante Dockett, normal death trade, 67 overall. And our seventh round pick was Tony Adams, cornerback, 67 overall, normal death trade. So our picks weren't crazy here. All right, so here we have our starting lineup right now i will put borden in at center above rulier who is my backup now i want to find out what the dev trade is for borden here our second hidden dev trade is drayton he will slot in behind sam cosme who's gone up to 77 which is very nice cold turner keeps dropping down but i want him as my number one tight end apart from that the offensive line has has potential to grow. Uh, I do think that uh, we will see some development over the next season. Uh, the target, of course, is to make the playoffs. Uh, we might be able to do that with a lot of luck, but then again, um, I highly doubt it. What I'm looking for is a positive season. Um, and after bringing in Taylor Rapp at free safety, for instance, um, I do feel like we, we have improved defense uh, and offense has been has in, been improved by Blasingame here at fullback. So yeah, let's head out and see you at the end of the regular season. Okay, so at the end of the 2023 regular season, we found ourselves in third spot. That's an improvement over last season. Um, not really there where I want to be, of course. Uh, I want to have a positive season with more wins than losses, obviously. Um, nevertheless, we have gone up in overalls, that is good. So player negotiation time, um, I have resigned. Marvin Wilson, he's 25, I think that he will improve. He's got great strength and he's just not that expensive, but I do see him as a part for the future. I did resign Chase Young, I just want him around. He's a superstar X-Factor, great player. Most expensive contract, of course, but uh, I do want to hold on to him. Kendall Fuller, I will not be handing a new offer. I just think that at 29, he's a great player, but he is just a bit too expensive at the moment. Um, Antonio Gibson, I did resign 26 years old, 92 overall. I resigned Montez Sweat. I resigned Cameron Curl, who went up to a superstar dev, uh, which is great. Um, I didn't re-sign Curtis Samuel, he's 28, he is a great uh, wide receiver, but I do think that he's a bit expensive. Uh, I did re-sign Michael Ojemudia, Sadiq Charles, Sean Baker, Kaleke Hudson and James Smith-Williams, as these are all not uh, that old yet and uh, very, very good backup options. Uh, we're trading three wide receivers again to the Bears, we are receiving a seventh round pick. We're starting to clear up cap space and uh, just focus on the players that we really need. All right, we are sending our center, Rullier, to the Colts. We are receiving Schmitz. He's 23 years old. He's around 930K in cap. And Rullier had a 10 mil uh, contract, so we are clearing up cap space. Time for a quick draft recap. In the first round, we pick Russell Gary. A cornerback we needed to replace at that position since we left uh, left Fuller without a contract here. Um, he's quick, he's got great acceleration, speed, agility and jumping, I really like that. Um, all the other stats will develop, of course, he's a normal death trade so they might take a bit longer. Second pick was Marcus Adams, wide receiver out of Arkansas, 65 overall, maybe for the future we'll have to see. Third pick, right edge, Jimmy Gills, 71 overall, normal dev trait. And free safety was our fourth pick, Matthew Beckett, 65 overall, normal dev trait from the Navy. David Smith, the D tackle, 74 overall. We do need depth at that position, so he will slot right in. Daniel Garrett, 68 overall, wide receiver from Massachusetts. And finally, Trent Melton. Another corner, 63 overall, one for the depth chart, I would say. So this is our lineup heading into the new season now. We have a pretty nice left side of the O-line. We have brought in a new center, Bernie Borden. He is a 
start up. He's from the last draft in 2023. Um, we have Kinnard still at right guard, Sam Cosme at right tackle. They're both going up and in their 80s. Never mind about the death trait. Uh, Cole Turner keeps dropping. I keep pushing him up. I want to see him develop to a high 70 in this season. If not, I will have to trade him. Um, the wide receiver core is looking strong. Terry McLaurin's still in there, of course. We've got Brown over here, Harris, and uh, Harmon. Gibson is our halfback. Sam Howell went up to a 79. I expect him to break into the 80s this season. On defense, we probably switched around the most. Our main two D tackles are back. I'm very happy about that. Uh, they were missing towards the end of the season. We did bring in another cornerback uh, in uh, Gary here. Uh, he's behind Ujmudia. Uh, Carl Fuller was let go. He was just too expensive. And uh, so overall, we find the team at a 91 in defense, 85 offense at 87 overall. We'll now be heading into the season. And uh, yeah, let's see where we end up. I do hope we make the playoffs, but um, at least uh, this is one more uh, development season for me. The season after that, I do want to see definite progress. So here we go and see you at the end of the 2024 season. At the end of the 2024 season, the Washington football team stands in third spot in the NFC East. Looking at uh, the results once again, just to get a feeling. Uh, we started out with a win against the Falcons, then two straight losses against the Colts and Browns. A clear win against the Cowboys. Wow, 48 points difference. That's absolutely insane. I don't know what happened in that game, but uh, the offensive yards gained it was just great first and second quarter, just basically scoring two touchdowns, three touchdowns straight ahead. What an insane game that must have been. Uh, Sam Howell threw for, uh, what was that, 316 yards, five touchdowns. Great. Dak Prescott, a quarter of that in, uh, no, a fifth in touchdowns, two interceptions. Just had a bad game. Rushing, Antonio Gibson and Kyron Williams were pretty much unstoppable here. Receiving Kelvin Harmon, Terry McLaurin, Antonio Gibson. Wow, nice game, good result, but uh, then two losses again against the Eagles and the Cowboys. The Eagles game was a close loss, uh, the Cowboys was pretty concise again then. A win against the Eagles again, pretty big margin, two losses, a win, a loss, a win. What I do notice is that the wins are pretty uh, clear wins and the losses are sometimes a bit closer uh, when you look at the points. But in the end, all that doesn't count. Uh, we did not make the playoffs. So let's take a look at the roster here. I've already upgraded the players, of course. And uh, taking a look here, we can see Sam Howell has gone up to an 86. That is great. I was hoping him to break into the 80s, but now he's in the higher 80s. Uh, he's still a normal dev trait, uh, but uh, that should change soon, I hope. Um, apart from that, everybody's looking good here. I do see that uh, we have a missing player here. I reckon he's on the injured list. So we have Sadiq Char slotting in here as his replacement. Uh, Cole Turner went up to an 80. That's very nice. Um, I will not be replacing him. I do want to hold on to him. Kind of really like, like what he's bringing to the team. And on defense, uh, things are looking prettier than ever. We have three superstars. We have Cameron Curl here, 26 years old, up to a 92 and a superstar dev. Uh, that's great. Uh, at midline back, we've got Jamin Davis, 26, and a superstar dev trade as well. And down here, Josh Allen, uh, Jonathan Allen, sorry. Our very experienced superstar, deep tackle. He is 30 now, but I will be holding on to him. Uh, with these dev trades, players tend to regress a bit slower. Chase Young, 26, the number three rank left end. 
in the league, so that's great. Okay, player negotiation time again. We of course re-signed Jamin Davis. I want him at the center of my defense. We're not gonna offer a new contract to Tress Way, 35 years old, and we already brought in uh, Tyler Bass. Uh, wide receiver Diami Brown has been re-signed, 25 years old, 87 overall, looking great already. Sam Cosme has been re-signed, uh, he's my starting right tackle. At the moment I don't see any huge improvements and we just gotta watch the cap space as well. Benjamin St. Just has been re-signed as a corner. Derek Forrest has been re-signed at strong safety, he's my backup of course. John Michael Schmitz has been re-signed at center, he's a backup. And I did not re-sign Noah Taylor and Dax Holyfield. Just don't feel like they bring that much to the squad and just a little bit of cap space saved here. So just a quick check looking at our roster at the moment. Um, we can see that Cole Turner has gone up to star dev. This is great, he will be improving quicker now. Uh, Sam Howell has also received the star dev trait. At age 24 he's an 86 overall. I really like this. Um, he's going up and uh, I do feel like uh, maybe this uh, next season or the season after that could be the season where we really um, strike gold with uh, most of these players. Uh, on defense I uh, noticed that Montez Sweat has gone up to superstar dev trade as well. That is great. I really have a feeling like uh, there's no real position that needs to be improved straight away um, and we would definitely lose uh, some quality. The only position where I feel like we could really tinker a bit and improve it further would be the corner. Uh, Michael Ojemudia did go down from a star jabs. That did come a bit surprising. Um, so uh, let's just see. Maybe we can do one or two trades to just push up uh, the team into, into absolute uh, uh, heights and really uh, ensure our progress into the playoffs. Okay, so we have traded uh, St. Just, our corner, to the Bears with a 7th and 5th round pick for this year. We are receiving Elam, he's a 23-year-old cornerback, 85 overall already. He has a normal dev trade, so nothing fancy there. But uh, he's lowering cap space and he's an immediate push to the defense. Alright, another deal done. We're sending our left outside linebacker, Tyler Dodson, and a 6th round pick. The Giants, we are receiving a left outside linebacker where he is a star dev and uh, 23 years old. Our lineup has changed a little bit. We now can see uh, that we have Ware up here and we can see Elam at corner. Uh, our defense has been pushed by these trades. We are now at a 96 defense and 91 offense and 93 overall. Let's see where this brings us. We still have the draft uh, in front of us. Recap of the 2025 draft. The Cameron Vincent was our first pick in the first round. He is a 69 overall left tackle, so not a great pick in the first round, I have to say. Second round, we did a bit better. We brought in Glenn Cartier, wide receiver, 76 overall normal death trade. Cassidy Henry, a free safety at a 65 overall, and Bryce Hill, 71 overall, right edge. We're at the end of the 2025 regular season now, and we can see that the Washington football team is at a 15 and 2 atop the NFC East. At first, I was a bit uh, confused because I was looking for our opponent in the wildcard playoff round, but then I checked the bracket and I was very happy to see that we made it straight to the divisional playoffs so that's that's absolutely fantastic let's take a quick check uh, of what the squad looks like at the moment i only upgraded the players and didn't go into the team or do any check up there um, everything looks to be improved uh, 92 91 90 89 close to breaking the 90 kennard here sam calls me at an 86 colton 85 uh, wide receivers are in a 99 and 92. Sam Howell did go up again, that's nice. He's now sitting on a 92 comfortably uh, with a star dev, so that's great. Antonio Gibson already at 99, also with a star dev, that's great. 
and on defense uh, things are unchanged in terms of development traits so that does not really matter a lot uh, players went up we now have a solid 99 left edge D tackle 99 D tackle 199 and right edge 97 and with Monte Sweat cornerback is 87 and 83 respectively and uh, Taylor App is at an 87 and Cameron Curl is a superstar dev still but at a 97 overall now so this is really looking very very good um, I can understand why the team did so well um, so without much further ado let's head on and uh, move towards the divisional championship game all right so here we are uh, in the divisional playoff we will be playing the Dallas Cowboys uh, we can already see Ezekiel Elliott down there grinning up at us and <laughs> obviously not containing his joy at playing against us so let's head straight into the game I will be simming these games um, with uh, quick sim um, but we'll be heading and jumping into the game if I feel like it or if I feel like the team could need me Alright, so Sam Howell onto the field here, very nice everything. If you remember the last time we played against the Dallas Cowboys, we beat them by about by around uh, 40 points if I remember it correctly. So let's see if Sam Howell can lead the team to a win. All right, so we're at 34-34 in overtime. We have 33 seconds left here. Let's try and push forward. Tyler Bass getting ready here. And uh, I need to use the timeout straight away. I want to make sure that we really make it through here. It is uh, a tighter game than I had hoped for, to be honest. Um, let's go with McLaurin. Nice catch. Let's pick up as many yards as we can before going out of bounds. So, great run by McLaurin here. I really like that. Um, we got an RPO maybe, where are we, 33, we could go for it, but I would just like to get a bit closer yet, um, maybe go with Harmon here, or Gibson, Gibson my primary, Harmon my secondary, alright, there we go, that should do, let's call the timeout now, and next up we're gonna be taking the field goal Tyler base has been warming up enough so out come the special teams and I pressed the wrong button god damn it well that's fantastic isn't it <laughs> I did press the wrong button <laughs> That was absolutely terrible. All right, let's try that again. This time I would like to press the correct one. That is absolutely on me. Stupidest button press ever. And Tyler Bass, to my great relief, buries it between the posts. But uh, the Dallas Cowboys make it back. Let's go with some dragon spacing here. All right, very nice. Turn it clear and making it through despite being tackled here. All right, what are we going to do? Let's go with the halfback stretch. Inside zone. Uh, 
Uh, not much to be had for Gibson here. Being stropped pretty quickly by Leighton Van Der Esch. I do would like to use a slant run here. Let's try and go with Dragon Spacing again. Worked well the last time. Just wary of these cornerbacks back there. Yeah, this time around. Man, that was not uh, thrown well. It was thrown out of the sack. Let's go with a mesh spot here. Harmon, my receiver. Very nice catch and out of bounds here for Harmon. 125 on the clock. 37 37. This is a really uh, tough game. Did not expect this. But we're in it now. Gibson, alright. I just need to press about a few more yards here. Let's go with another halfback dive. And then we're bringing out the special teams again. Alright, a lot of confusion, a lot of tackles. And Gibson makes it to the 20 yard line. We are going to take the field goal here. That's an accurate kick. Tyler Bass puts it between the sticks. And the Washington football team goes through to the next round. Right, so here we go. Conference championship against the Green Bay Packers. On paper, we should be a bit better than they are. Um, but uh, I've learned to never underestimate the, the team in Madden. Uh, it can simply turn around and go bad pretty quickly. All right, so here we are. NFC conference championship game. Sam Howell out onto the pitch and again we focus on him all right so the game has started uh, the Packers are first on the board next up Washington strikes back seven and three uh, ten and seven very nice 14 and 10 second quarter going back and forth a bit 17 and 14 looks to be a pretty evenly matched game and nobody really separating themselves that much uh, it's the fourth quarter, it's 24 and 24. Just want to head in and make sure that we do make it to the Super Bowl this season. All right, I want to have a run play. Let's go the halfback draw here. Definitely needed here. Don't want to give up the ball unnecessarily. Only a few yards here. But uh, David Ojabo So it's a uh, third and eleven. Um, what do we do? What do we do? Let's go with a halfback zone here. But uh, So we do pick up uh, quite a few yards. Another injury here. Browning goes down. Again a timeout with fourth and four. Um, I do not want to punt. I want to... Ah, let's try the curl flats. Should work. Very nice, Gibson separating himself here, heading out to the left, and uh, going out of bounds. So now we are safe again, I just needed to turn around that fourth, and four here. And no real uh, route opening up for uh, Gibson here. Let's see if we can get a halfback stretch to work. I want to force the Packers to use up another timeout, um, but the clock is running down anyways. So Gibson being caught up here uh, by Collins, 
Let's see if we can get a counter white to work here. Green Bay has a very tough defense, I really have to say. Rashawn Gary and Kenny Clark back there, they're really locking things down a lot. All right, that absolutely did not work. It was a very, very bad call here by me. Uh, let's see what we do. Let's go for PA crossers. I know it's a risk. Um, and if we force a turnover, then we might be done for. But I just can't really risk uh, giving the ball to Green Bay that easily. There we go. Terry McLaurin free. And we are going out of bounds. Very nice. Alright, I'm happy with that. Let's see. We are very close. Uh, let's go for two more runs. And if we don't manage to do that, then we'll just pick up the field goal. I tried opening up to the left, but uh, no way through there. So here's our timeout. And uh, we're at 16 seconds now. Let's go for a halfback dive. Antonio Gibson. We're at 7 yards. But uh, Rashawn Gary is just locking down that center. There's hardly any way through. And uh, we're at the 3 yard line. We'll now be going for the field goal. Nothing fancy. And a timeout called straight before kicking by Green Bay. I, I'm a bit surprised by that. I just think they want to add the, add the pressure. And uh, of course they are. But uh, let's see what Tyler Bass is capable of. And he puts the ball through the sticks. It's good. And the Washington football team heads to the Super Bowl. Very nice Tyler Bass. Congratulated by Coach D-Red and Chase Young. Super Bowl Sunday, Washington football team against the Las Vegas Raiders. That's an opponent I was not expecting. Although, uh, after their trade for Devante Adams, I do see them uh, as, as uh, very much improved in comparison to last season. Um, let's take a quick look at the team heading into the Super Bowl now. And if there are any any changes here, uh, no changes to dev traits. But we do see that Sam Howell has gone up to a 93 overall. That's great. Uh, on defense, wow, I can see another superstar. Cole Holcomb, uh, our right outside linebacker, has gone up to a 90 and superstar dev trait. That's great and very well deserved. As well as, I can't believe my eyes, Cameron Curl, 26 years old, and a superstar X-Factor at strong safety here. This is very nice. I always like having a strong defense because I like focusing on playing the offensive snaps. So here we go. This is the team that will be uh, heading into the Super Bowl against the Las Vegas Raiders. So here we are. Super Bowl Washington football team against the Las Vegas Raiders. What a nice spectacle here. And the Falcons Arena, if I'm not mistaken. Sam Howell leading the Washington football team out onto the pitch. This time we are playing in our white jerseys. Derek Carr coming out here for the Raiders. So for the Raiders, uh, it's Derek Carr as a quarterback. Uh, running back is Josh Jacobs, no big surprise there. Fullback is Adam Prentice. All right, wide receiver, we've got Devante Adams, Chris Olave, wow, Alex Smith, Emery Hunter, Bryce Watters, and Darren Waller. Um, Chris Olave is a wide receiver out of the 2022 draft class. Tight end is Darren Waller. Left tackle, Colton Milner, 96 overall. Left guard, Connor Williams, 85 overall. Center is Andre James, 89 overall. Right guard, Alex Leatherwood, 92. Right tackle, Evan Neal, another prospect from the uh, 2022 draft. Left edge, Max Crosby, 99. Right edge, Alex Wright, 87. D 
D-tackle, we got Bilal Nichols, Antonio Oram, Solomon Thomas, left outside linebacker Daniel Hunter, mid linebacker J.M. Brown, D. Allen, and right outside linebacker Ben Bergkirvin. Corners are Justin Maxwell, Isaiah Rogers, Donald Willis. Really looks like we have our work cut out for us here. This will not be easy. All right, so Washington did win the Super Bowl against the Las Vegas Raiders. It was a very close game, 38-35 was the final score. Uh, the Raiders were the better team by far, and I had to jump in, and, and it was really a battle. Uh, the thing that, that's uh, annoying me, and, and I have to apologize, is I, I obviously did not uh, record that part. Uh, the recording must have ended, and I didn't notice because it was too much. Uh, too far into the action so all I can give you is a season recap here uh, we did win uh, the Super Bowl 38 uh, versus 35 here against the Raiders uh, Super Bowl most valuable player was the quarterback Sam Howell uh, yearly awards went to Josh Allen Dan Campbell Alvin Camaro and Kayvon Thibodeau the rookie of the year was AJ Allen and defensive rookie was Dorian Watts um, so uh, this this was a uh, this this was the win versus uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, this is the end of this quick and dirty rebuild. Um, it was definitely quite quick, quicker than I expected. Um, the team could probably have used one more season to really improve, um, especially on offense, where uh, I really struggled at times getting uh, plays out to Cole Turner and uh, Brown uh, not really always finding his routes. Gibson was was good enough, um, but he always also struggled. And uh, the O-line was pretty much always pushed around by the very, very strong uh, Raiders defense. Um, I uh, did see that I have footage of that uh, defense uh, of, of the, um, the D-line. Uh, our defense is looking very, very good. Um, could not be looking better. Uh, we can see um, that uh, we're very solid. We're, everybody is in their 90s. Uh, for some reason, Cole Holcomb uh, dropped his uh, his superstar factor, uh, superstar dev trade again, uh, as did Josh Allen. He's now down uh, to his star dev with 31 years of age. So. Uh, yeah, quite a few changes. I would say that uh, I'm very happy with picking Sam Howell over uh, Carson Wentz here. Uh, he improved very, very nicely, and I do think that he uh, would be improving even further um, in regards to uh, to his overall and the death trait. So at this point, I will uh, I will leave this quick and dirty rebuild of the Washington football team. Uh, and uh, end it, leave it behind. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please drop me a like and subscribe. This always helps the channel a lot. And uh, if you want to see me do a special team or something like that, uh, then just drop me a comment below. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.